Hey, this is Gazelig um, for GrinderSchool.com. Uh, here today with part two of my $5 two rebuy one add on um, tournament that I had deep running. Um, let's get straight into it. Um, you'll notice that we left off with King Nine suited. Um, this is, uh, Poker Tracker's got a really cool feature now where you can um, set your preferred seat in the replayer. Uh, so that's what I've done, so I'll always be uh, at this point uh, down the bottom now, which uh, should make things um, easier so I'm not going to be popping around when I move table. Um, let's get straight into it. Uh, King Nine City is kind of hand that I, you know, I like to, to open. Um, um, if we look around the table, uh, we look at the stacks um, and the... Uh, sort of players we've got to, got to play against. Um, we've got four players who are going to be in position on us. Um, you know, they could easily flat with uh, with hands that dominate us. We're going to be put into some, some tricky tricky spots. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't mind just uh, just folding this here as well. Uh, let's move on. They're really looking for... Um, you know, if we just uh, let's pause it for a minute, uh, we're still at 135 big blinds. Um, the average stack is over, still over 100 big blinds deep. So we can, I think, uh, you know, we should be looking to play our, our premium hands, um, be looking to play suited connectors and pocket pairs as well. We can, I think, we can open suited connectors um, from early position um, in order to make it a little bit more difficult for our opponents to sort of guess the kind of hands that we're playing. Uh, you'll notice at the moment, about over 68 hands, they've played sort of... Um, I don't tend to, to like the, the gap between uh, VPIF and PFR. I think we've played very passively so far. You can see this aggression factor 1.1. 1 .1. Um, you'll notice, or I hope, hope, hope you notice, and I hope I actually do this, um, that I pick up the aggression uh, more and more as the tournament goes on. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye on. So at the moment with 29, hopefully we'll get to... Um, these numbers will uh, get a little bit closer. The so Jack Ten suited kind of hand that I like to defend in the in the big blind. Um, it's a pretty big isolation against these two players, um, and he's he's fairly tight. Um, I can't remember what I chose to do. I just chose to fold here. Um, I'm not getting particularly good odds. We've got to call four eighty into a pot of a thousand ninety five. We've got two players to up behind, so we're going to be in position against the prefold raiser, but um, out of position against uh, these two players. Now these two players have already shown pretty loose players and uh, pretty fishy stats, um, so that could be a reason to to call here. Um, if perhaps if you'd made it a little bit smaller, we could we could come along. Um, if you think about it, four eighty is not a great deal of our of our stack. Um, it's a hand that plays. Pretty well, you know, obviously you can flop straight, some flushes, straight draws, flush draws. Um, so I, you know, you, I think I could have, uh, I could have flatted there. Uh, now we see that the two players flatted as well. Um, interesting to see how this plays out. So he see bets. He see bets fairly big. Um, about seventy-five percent of the pot. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, now if we were going to have to, we're going to raise here. Uh, with two overs and a open-ended uh, straight draw, um, then uh, you know we've got to put in a sizable, sizable raise. Um, you know, he's not making it uh, fifty percent of the pot, um, so something just to keep an eye on for the future. King Queen. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd isolate here. Uh, this player's already shown that he's limp willing to to limp call uh, in the previous hand. Um, He's not folding to C bets very often. Uh, he's playing pretty passively. Um, I think King Queen offsuit is a good hand here to bet. Um, 885 board. It's quite difficult uh, for him to have hit that. Um, so I'd imagine that I bet somewhere between a third and half the pot. Yeah, so a third pot um, doesn't have to be that big. Uh, you know, he could call with ace high, 6-7. Um, Sixes, sevens, maybe twos, threes, and fours. Um, but quite a lot of the time, he's just going to fold. Um, by making a small bet here as well, um, any um, sort of, I guess, any any paint card we can uh, we can double barrel, um, get him to fold uh, quite a lot of the time. Uh, but as you see, he just does just does just fold the flop. Uh, just to reiterate that, um, but if you bet small on the flop, I can bet smaller on the turn as well. But the strength of double barreling. Um, 
will get him to fold a lot of his uh, a lot of his hands. Um, yeah, it just it costs us uh, it costs us less. Ace queen can't imagine that I'm going to be folding this. So min raise. Um, the stacks are still really really deep. Um, so there, there could be an argument for opening a little bit bigger. Um, I said this in previous videos though. What we want to try and do with a hand, a strong strong hand like this, is to keep in all of the hands that we dominate. So we want the the big blind to call with all of his weaker aces um, and his weaker queens. Um, so by min raising, that gives us the best possible option of doing that. Also, um, we uh, risk 300, 300 chips uh, to win 405. Um, so as we move forward and we're looking to, to steal the blinds more often, steal the pot more often, um, you know, this becomes our standard raise size, uh, makes it harder for us to, to be played against. Uh, so we flop top pair, top kicker. Uh, we can see this part of 50% of hands, guys, doesn't fold. But 43% falls to 43% of flop bets. Okay, we're only over 50 hands though, uh, but he's pretty passive, so I can imagine that I decide to bet. So just under half pot. Um, I think if we th if we think about the kind of hands that would call us on this on this flop, king queen, queen jack, queen ten, any flush draw, possibly hands like four five um, for the for the open and a straight draw. Um, I think we could you know if we're trying to get value from those hands, we could bet a little bit bigger. Um, he does call, um, so those are the kind of hands that we still think are in his in his range. Um, at this point, I think we, you know, we're still ahead of uh, a lot of them. Um, the only had potential hand that we're now behind. Um, if we were ahead on the uh, flop, uh, I suppose like six five, um, maybe something as weird as seven four. Um, but I think we should definitely still uh, look to value bet here. Look to about 800 or 900 chips. Yeah, so 800 chips. I think we could bet a little bit more on the flop and a little bit more on the turn. Um, he does decide to raise this. He's a really passive player. Um, when a passive player decides to, to check raise the the turn, um, I really feel that alarm bell should start start ringing. Um, there's a chance that he could be doing this with king queen and queen jack. Um, but a lot of the time when a passive player decides to check raise the turn, um, it's going to be with um, a hand better than uh, better than just one pair. Um, and I did just decide to fold. Um, I think as well, if we decide to flat here, and then we could we could choose to flat here. I think that would be that would be fine. Um, but then possibly fold the the river. Um, but uh, let's have a look. Um, I think we can expect a bet on the on the river as well. So really, what we're doing, we're not just um, calling, um, thinking that we might give up on the river. Um, I think a passive player, like I said, if they decide to check raise uh, the turn, their hands probably much better than this. And this is quite a disciplined fold, I think. Um, I don't think uh, you know we've still got. Let's have a look. We've still got over a hundred big blinds. Um, I don't think we need to to be too upset about folding here. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel comfortable uh, just letting that go. Uh, well played him if if he did decide to do it with uh, a hand worse than mine. The so four five suited kind of hand I might open here. I decided to let it go, uh, probably because there's loose players behind us. Uh, we've got a guy playing forty seven percent hands here, thirty one percent, forty seven percent. Uh, I wouldn't mind too much playing against this guy because it would be in position uh, and he's fairly passive. Um, but I tend not to like having to play out of position, if at all possible, and especially not with a with a weak hand. So 10-5 off suit, someone raises, we're just not getting involved with that hand. So okay, so we get a four X here now from the uh, the fishy player. Obviously, we're not playing nine seven off suit. Sometimes it's good just to look at the stop the replay here just to see what kind of race sizes people are trying out. Um, six four off suit. Uh, it's I guess it's fairly ambitious if we just go back here. 
when I'm uh, when I'm in game, uh, I look at you know, how tight the players in the blinds are. I look at this stat here. It says fold to steal stat. Um, it's only over three times he's folded once. We don't really have enough uh, hands on this this guy. Um, I think six four suited would be a better hand here uh, to to steal with. Um, we don't have to take every steal spot. Um, the good thing, though, I suppose, if we we're raising here and folding, um, show that we're actually um, capable of stealing um, fairly wide. And when we do pick up a strong hand in the steal positions, uh, so uh, cut off and um, the button, um, we may well get action from uh, from aggressive blinds. So I think it's it's good to sort of um, raise crappy hands like this every now and again. Um, but I think we could definitely just do it with 6-4 suited rather than 6-4 off suit. If we get flatted here, um, it's very difficult for us to um, move forward. We want something with playability post-flop and 6-4 suited has much more than 6-4 off suit. Um, I'm hoping I just decide to fold. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, so this is a, an interesting spot. Um, it's a guy raised from early position. He's 40 big blinds deep. I'd probably just flat with jacks. Um, really want a three bet, get it in against an early position uh, range, uh, which is ten would tend to be much, much stronger than jacks. Um, really, we're just hoping for ace king, possibly ace queen uh, that we're you know flipping against. This guy decides to three bet. Um, he's three bet 2% so far once. He's three bet once in this, uh, this tournament. Um, so I would imagine I just decide to to flat here rather than do anything else. Uh, yeah, um, it gets more complicated when this this guy decides to now four bet. Um, he doesn't, which is great. Um, so they both check. A um, couple of options here. I suppose I could uh, I could check behind. Um, I can't remember what I actually chose to do. And. Um, Seems strange for this guy to three bet and then check here. Um, someone who's three betting this little amount, uh, looking at aces, kings, queens, ace, king. Obviously, aces, kings, and ace, king are loving this flop. Queens, not so much. Um, I don't against that range. Um, I don't think that betting is really going to accomplish much. We bet he's going to call with queens. Um, so I just decide to drag it back. I also, what that allows us to do is get some information uh, from this guy once, we, once the turn uh, comes off. Uh, he now decides to bet 800. My guess is that he's got a hand something like Queens. Um, I think we can just flat here. Um, something that we could also do, um, been reading about recently, is something called a freeze play, uh, where we could just min raise or just raise, raise the turn. If he does have um, a weakish hand like uh, Ace-9 or a heart draw, um, you know, he may well call the raise, uh, and what that also allows us to do is um, almost get a cheap river, um, because if he sees us raise the turn, he's probably going to check to us on the river, um, and we can check behind. Um, so that's something that to consider. Um, here I just decided to, to flat. And he bets again. Um, I don't think we're going to be good a lot of the time here. Like we said, against that range of hands, um, I suppose he. Could, I suppose he could. Mm, I suppose he three bet with tens. I think that he's value betting now. But if you look at this, he's a passive player. I just can't imagine that he thinks that he can value bet uh, tens here. Um, I mean, the most likely hand that I have here uh, is like a weaker pocket pair and a, maybe a straight draw and a flush draw. Um, and if that was the case, and it, with the, with the, like pocket tens, he he could check call. Um, bluff catch. Um, I did just decide to fold. I think that's a, a good discipline fold um, against his range, the range of hands that he we thought he was was playing. Um, I think that's a good uh, a good fold. We've made a couple of discipline folds already now. I think that's I think that's good. Um, I did, we don't have to spew off chips. Uh, passive players deciding to bet two streets. Um, yeah, he could have easily had pocket kings. Um, and decided to check the flop. Uh, I would have expected him though to bet more on the turn if he had pocket kings because he'd expect calls from from worse come the turn. Um, 
Uh, but even you know, even if he's choosing to value back queens here, um, we're still behind. So it's a good fold. So down to sixty-five bigs. Still loads of uh, loads of room. Ace and offsuit. Um, Ace and offsuit. Always here. It talked about kind of hand that's good to three bet uh, light with. Uh, it's the it's the uh, hand that you you know probably wouldn't want to call with. Um, uh, yeah, the best hand that you wouldn't want to call with. Um, so you can turn it into a three bet. Uh, you have blockers to these ace x hands um, and pocket tens. Uh, from this position against this player, then um, he's playing really, really tight. Uh, I think we can just comfortably um, give this up. We've got loads of players to out behind us as well. Um, if we were further round, later position, uh, I could think about uh, three betting light here. Um, although, if we look at this, he's, this player is just not stealing very, very much at all at the moment. So, It'll be quite difficult. Uh, Queen Jack off suit. Mm. Um, I think this is too bad, but having said what I said about the number of players who are behind us, we've been playing out of position quite a lot of the time. Um, I'd much sooner have something like Queen Jack suited uh, rather than Queen Jack off suit. Uh, we'll see how it, how it plays out. This guy now decides to shove in, makes it, I suppose, makes life easier for us. So we can just fold. Ace King against eight. That's something to keep an eye on as well. But this guy decides to shove in this guy isos. You know, we've raised from early position. We could easily have a, a hand that dominates eights, but he was willing to risk his whole stack there. Um, something to keep an eye on. Um, let's look at ace two off suit. Doesn't do particularly well against this guy's opening range. He's been really tight so far, but we are getting 6.46 to one. Um, I think we can chuck in an extra big blind there. Obviously, we don't want to go too crazy on a flop like this. Um, but when you're getting really good odds, it can be good to um, uh, to call in spots like that. Okay. Um, let's have a look, quick look at this. This guy is raising with about forty big blinds. We've got about fifty big blinds. Uh, he's raised first in twenty-one percent, only three times over fourteen hands. Um, it would point towards, you know, he's not um, not really tight from from early position. Um, we have an ace blocker here, um, so three bet seems seems okay. Um, and he's fairly passive as well, so I'd imagine that he would uh, be playing fit or fo fold post flop. Um, we can bet a lot of flops and take it down, and if he shows resistance, we can we can give up. Um, on this kind of flop, I think it's difficult for us to get three streaks of value. It's not particularly draw heavy, so it doesn't make sense to bet the flop and the turn and check back the river. Uh, as our two streets value. Also, he only has like two, three times the pot left, um, so it makes much more sense to, to, I would say, to check back the flop and uh, bet the turn and um, bet the river. Um, we're now chopping with any ace, X hand. Um, I, hope, well, I just decided to check back. Um, this is the same guy that decided to check raise us um, on the turn before. Um, maybe I was that was playing on my mind a little bit, uh, thinking that he could easily check raise us with with a strong hand like ace queen. Um, here I, I have to value bet. Um, he's shown weakness all the way along, um, so we try and get value from. Um, well, we can get value from a6 hands. I think that he would probably bet an a6 hand on the turn or the river. Uh, so I think that's probably unlikely, um, unless he had a hand, I guess, something like a like weak, weak ace. But even then, um, you know, the queen's playing as a kicker. Um, 
I'd reckon about 50% pot here. Uh, yeah, that's what I choose to bet. And he does just fold. Um, so, not sure what he was deciding to play. Um, but we managed to play play a pot in position. And this is the thing about um, three betting passive players. Uh, is that they're not just gonna, they're not going to give you too much trouble post flop. Uh, it makes it easier to play. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm a massive fan of this uh, of this play. Uh, three betting under the gun open uh, with ace nine off suit. Uh, but in this uh, instance, it, it worked out. The jacks here against an early position raise, uh, 56 big blinds deep. Um, just deciding to flat. I don't want to um, three bet get it in. Uh, the only thing is that this guy um, is, is a bit of a fish, and we we three bet jacks here. We can expect to him to call us with a much wider range that jacks is doing really well against. Um, We've seen here he's falls to three bet once so far. That's not enough stats for us to think about. The other reason we might choose to three bet is to avoid something like this where we get um, another caller. Um, really want to try and get it heads up against the fish. So that might point us towards three betting. And we could, uh, the problem is we three bet the last hand as well. Um, so, you know, we could expect him to, to four bet a wider range. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of getting it in 56 big blinds deep. Uh, that's a really big bet, uh, well over pot. Uh, I'm hoping I just, just, yeah, I just decided to fold. I mean, if we call now, uh, we're going to expect uh, another big bet on the turn. Um, he could be, he could be bluffing here. Um, I just think that against this kind of player, it's just something perhaps we need to um, for a much, much stronger hand. We're ahead of. We had have quite a lot of his hands here, actually. Um, anything is by calling here. We've still got the player to act behind us, um, and it's just difficult to think what kind of hands is he deciding to over over bet the pot with. Um, perhaps I could call one. Um, I think I'm playing pretty timidly uh, in this tournament so far. Um, so perhaps as well as like three betting pre, uh, would have been a better idea to get it heads up. Um, as I said, I, you could you could flat the flop, um, committing um, about nine big blinds. We go down to uh, it'd be about forty big blinds, so it wouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, but what sort of turns are we really looking for? Um, obviously, a jack's going to be amazing for us. Um, but an undercard comes as he deciding to to bet big with aces, kings, queens. Um, does he already have a set? Uh, no, it's, it's quite difficult to, to try and try and work this out, um, and I can expect us to get a pretty big bet on the turn as well. And as we've seen, he's a really passive player, um, so uh, no, it's a bit of a tight fold. Um, I think maybe in the future I could I could call one bet. Okay, so this guy now decides to nine x under the gun, and we've got ace king. Um, Having just said all about like not wanting to get it in with jacks, 56 big blinds deep, um, I'm slightly confused as to why I chose to shove ace king here. Um, you know, obviously we're hoping he has ace queen, ace jack, um, but in a way I think I'd sooner get jacks in. Um, ace king's obviously still a drawing hand. Uh, we still need to hit an ace or a king, or hope we're up against a weaker ace or a weaker king. Um, so, if I'm honest, I don't particularly like this. We've still got one, two, three, four players to act behind us. I think I remember this hand. Um, I think we, we got a little bit lucky. Um, no, I just had enough of this guy um, and just chose to, to, to get it in with Ace-King. Uh, I'm not sure it's a, the best idea in the world. Uh, but we river the straight and he has... Oh, he has Ace-8. Uh, so that's marvellous. So we uh, chop that with him. So, um, I'm sure it's the hand we play against this guy where we, we don't get it in good, um, but we manage to suck out. Um, but here we get it in really, really good, and he sucks out on us. Um, so that sucks. Uh, but it's something to keep an eye on. That he's 9xing ace 8, 8, 8, ace 8 suited under the gun. I mean, that just seems really bad. Makes me want to have called the jacks now as well. Um, 
but oh well. Uh, the jack's on the flop. So ace king here. I think this is the one where he three bets us and we get four bet pile. Yeah. So he decides to um, rebuy us. He's he's the guy we talked about earlier having three bet pretty tight range. Um, three bet not all in with eights and ace king suited. Um, eights is this hand, so it's a shame because. Um, Poker Tracker will give you stats up to the time, but the uh, these notes um, are actually post this hand. Um, you know all the notes that we have on on this player. Um, but hey, I know that he does decide to three bet with eights here. Um, I've already seen him make some some donkey plays, um, nine x with ace eight suited. I think that ace king offsuit here is much uh, very uh, simple shove. Um, there's already 4k in the pot. Even you know he could fold here, uh, and we pick up a nice pot, uh, or he can get it in with uh, ace queen, ace jack, or even ace eight suited like he did last time. Um, and we just river a full house uh, against his pocket eights. So this time we had a much stronger hand, but I still think ace king off suit was fine to get in there. Get a walk here, um, up to a hundred big blinds. Now he's three xing. Interesting to see. Uh, so here he is over betting the pot again. It's, we've already seen Jeff Bass be a really tight player. Um, so that's really annoying me now because uh, he uh, bets big on the flop and then just checks back. Uh, so he had third pair, brilliant. Um, so Jeff Bass uh, makes makes a good call there. Um, interesting to see what would have happened if this guy decided to bet all three streets. Um, not sure if Jeff Bass can call uh, three barrels there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's annoyed me a little bit because I think I could have called with the jacks, but doesn't matter. Let's move on. So here I could just choose to isolate this player with ace-eight offsuit, uh, but he doesn't fold too, too many c-bets, um, and we've already seen him play, be a bit funky, um, so we just need to be careful, and we're not trying to get into massive wars with him um, with a weak hand. Okay, so pocket sevens here. Um, the bigs. This guy decides to to open. Um, I don't think three betting getting in against this guy um, is going to be good. I expect just to flat here, um, play for set value, but also be able to read the ball. We saw him bet big on the flop and then check back the turn, check the river. Uh, that was out of position though, um, so it'd be interesting to see here. He does just decide to check. Um, given that he chose to bet third pair big or before, uh, makes me think perhaps he has something with a bit more showdown value. Uh, he checks again. Uh, if we can get this to the river, that'd be great. And then he overbets. I imagine I'll just fold. Yeah. Um, if you think about this, yeah, he could be bluffing here. Um, we already thought that he was doing it with something with a bit more showdown value. Um, possibly King X, A6. Um, you're betting this with the flush draw. Uh, we don't have to be right very much of the time here. Um, but I think the extra 6k chips that we pick up now to go up to 33k is not worth as much as going down to 24k at um, this point. Uh, so I just feel quite comfortable just letting this go. Um, I'm just thinking that we will we will get this guy. Uh, we've already got him with Ace King, um, although he got it in good against us. Uh, but we did, yeah. We don't have to just uh, start spewing off chips, and call in big uh, river bets. 
Okay, Ace Jack off suit, just gonna be folding here. Uh, this guy's range is just really, really tight. Also, he has about 25 big blinds. Um, so we do make any sort of play, we're gonna to have to commit ourselves to his raise and that's just not gonna be good. Okay, so this guy just decides to limp this time. Um, I want to take control of the pot straight away. I would expect him to call 100% of the time here. Um, probably have a hand that's, that's quite strong, um, or really strong against his range. Uh, here playing a lot of ASEX hands that are going to be weaker than ours. Uh, but he just decides to fold, so my whole thing about him calling 100% of the time uh, has just been shown to be a false. But that's good, we take it on the pot. Pre-flop, that's fine. Uh, so we look here again. This guy doesn't fold too much. Steals like four times, only once he's folded. Um, well, they both have uh, reshove stacks. Um, we can see this guy hasn't three bet yet. Over forty-two hands. This guy's three bet three times uh, versus a steal fifty percent. So we can expect this guy to be three bet restealing fairly wide. Um, don't expect to see a flat with this stack size, um, but I don't think it's a, a massive mistake on his part. Uh, he decides to check. I don't know we see about this board. Um, I'd like to go a little bit bigger here, um, just because it then commits more of his stack if he decides to raise. Um, he pretty much has to commit the rest, you know, the whole rest of his stack. Uh, whereas you make it quite small, he then decides to three bet really small. Um, I don't think we can do anything here but just fold. Um, I quite like his, his raise, he gets us to fold all of our air hands um, and even if and if we have a strong hand on this board he um, there's a cheap way of him finding out um, so I don't think that's that's too bad. You could also be doing this with a really strong hand aces and kings uh, so the, the flat was perhaps a little bit unusual um, so maybe he did have a, a really strong hand um, but we're just able to, to fold in that spot. Ten Jack suited, great hand. Um, love playing suited, suited connectors and suited Broadway hands, uh, especially from, from late position. Look around there, we've got uh, two um, re-steal stacks behind us um, and we've got one short stack in the big blind. So we need to be wary of that. Um, but I think we can raise fold actually against this guy uh, because his three bet range is going to be so so wide. Uh, sorry, so tight uh, that ten jack suit is not doing too well against it. Um, so this guy doesn't fold to, to steals. It's not really a steal or raise from the hijack. Uh, so when we class as a steal by um, by a poker tracker, because uh, that only goes from the cut off the button and the small blind. Um, so here I make the same third, about third pot, um, see about, about 36%. He decides to call. So the kind of hands that he's going to be calling here, uh, top pair, like it's jack, king jack, queen jack. Uh, he could be calling with king queen, although I'd expect him to check raise shove, um, open, you know, any sort of straight draw. Uh, king queen, um, I expect him to, to shove here. Um, this is, you know, maximizes his fold equity. Um, so my guess now is that he's, he is calling with the hand like um, top pair. Uh, he could, he, I mean, he could be doing it with a straight draw. He's fairly passive. And perhaps isn't the kind of player that's going to be check raising the draw. Um, but against the kind of hands, you know, we've got a really strong hand here. We want to try and get the rest of his stack in um, by the river. Um, I think we can bet just over half pot here. If he if he does have a draw, we're not going to get a bet on the river unless he decides to bluff or. Um, well, and if he hits his draw, then we're, we're behind anyway. Um, uh, so King Queen got there. Uh, he decides to check. Um, we still think that we can get value from Ace Jack, Queen Jack, <coughs> King Jack. Um, I think we can. I think we can shove here. Um, no, we're only behind 
hand like king queen um blockers to like step 10 and step jacks um i think it's unlikely he calls two streets uh, with nines on here uh, i suppose he could have fours um and be looking to so play it we've shown a lot of aggression so far uh decide to shove and he just folds um so maybe he had a hand like second pair or um Maybe he did have top pair, um, but just uh, managed to get away from it. Well, that's really bad play. Just uh, just rewind here. Uh, so this guy has decided to open off a how many big blinds? Um, Thirteen big blind stack. Uh, to two and a half x, and then calls a three bet, and then folds. Uh, it just seems really bad. Uh, don't don't do that. Uh, if you have a thirteen big blind stack, um, if you're raising like that to induce and just get it in. Um, but I would just tend to 13 big blinds to shove it in if you decide to play it um, from that position. That seems really bad. Okay, so this guy decides to shove eight big blinds in. Let's see what odds we're getting. 43% uh, with king queen off suit. He's going to have to be shoving a fairly wide range. We've got four players to act behind us as well. Um, you know, if we were on the, in the big blinds when this player decides to shove, um, you know, possibly think about a call if we bring in poker stove. Let's have a look. So top 10%, not quite enough. 20%, definitely enough. Um, I think he's getting pretty desperate, um, so we could easily uh, range is that 15%. Uh, he could easily be shoving these uh, these hands. We're ahead of some of these king x hands and queen x hands. Um, so if we were we were on the button, we have a, you know a lot of chips at the moment as well. It's not going to affect our chances too much moving forward. Um, although if we think about it, neither is actually gaining 4k chips here. Um, you know, we'd want to be a strong favourite. Um, so if we suddenly went to Ace King off suit, then you know we're suddenly a massive favourite rather than just being. Um, let's have a look at it. Forty-six percent. Uh, so we're not actually a favourite. Um, so when we're making calls like this, um, much better to be a favourite. Get it in. Get it in good against his range of hands uh, that he could be possibly shoving. Um, I forget this was the player that decided to 2.5x call a 3 bet out position with 13 bigs and then fold the flop. Um, so he could be doing it with a wider range. Uh, I tend to find that weaker players with a short stack tend to wait for a decent hand. Uh, it be interesting to see if anybody else decides to call him. No, they don't. Um, but yeah, so when making calls like this, um, look at what the worst case scenario is. Um, if it's going to be that go down to 25k um, it's not too much of a big deal we've still got 50 big blinds uh best case i would say it's the worst case scenario is if we call and then one of these guys decides to shove um we're still down to 25k although we're probably then getting the right odds to to call um so that you know that would really really suck uh, because then we'd be down to 17k if we lose um and only 34 bicks um the best case scenario then is if he shoves, we call, someone else shoves, we ISO, and we then suddenly go up to uh, 40, 40k, up to 80 bigs, um, and that was great, but the uh, chances of that actually happening are quite small, um, so I'd prefer just to, to let this go uh, in this spot. I hope that explanation was uh, was okay. Um, post any questions if it, if it wasn't, and I'll, um, I'll be sure to... Uh, uh, to answer them and try and explain that in a little bit more detail if uh, if you didn't understand it.
So we're raising ace jack suited here. I think this is fine. Um, this is going to be close, thirty nine percent. So even against a really tight range, um, we're getting pretty much right odds. Is he going to be three bet shoving? Eight plus, yep. Ace ten suited king. Probably not these uh, weaker Broadway hands, but I reckon Ace ten suited, Ace queen off suit. Um, so it's a close one. Um, it's costing a seven seven k. So we go down to twenty one k if we lose. Uh, we've seen him three bet. Uh, also, he's made some some weird plays already. Um, so he could be doing it. We I can't remember what I chose to do. I did decide to make the call. Um, Probably based on the fact that uh, we'd seen him make some some weird plays already, and he, we think that he could easily be three betting here with a weaker hand uh, than Ace Jack. Um, if we think though, if we think this player is actually a decent player, we are opening from early position. He's only been there nine nine hands, so he won't have seen that. You know, we might be able to raise from early position with a weaker range. Um, so we'd expect our range to be pretty strong, which would mean his range would be pretty strong as well. Uh, but when you river a flush, it doesn't matter. Interesting to see. Yeah, he did have queens. Um, so we, yeah, we got massively, massively lucky there. Um, going back to what I said then, so we raised from early position. He's deciding to three bet us with uh, a thirteen big blind stack. It's, it's unlikely that he does it with a weaker hand. Um, he could easily do it with a hand that we're flipping against, eights, nines, and tens. Um, but his range is going to be that much stronger because we're raising from early position. And as you, as you can see, uh, that was spot on. Um, he did end up having uh, having a really strong hand, and we uh, we got massively massively lucky. Uh, so this guy decides uh, how many bigs does he have? Just over ten. So he has uh, twelve twelve big blinds. I imagine that we just choose to get this in against this player. Uh, yeah, ace queen off suit. If you imagine that he'd shoved there, he could easily be shoving ace jack, ace ten, king queen. Um, uh, or a small pocket pair uh, that we're flipping against. Uh, so that was fine. Um, so we're doing pretty well now. Up to a nice, nice stack. Um, five, six, city. I think this might be the. Actually, we'll just play through till we get the next hand that we decide to play. Uh, it's kind of hand I like to three bet. Now, if we look at the stacks around the table now, though, um, we've got a just under 20 bigs, 12, 13 bigs, 5 bigs, 5 bigs, uh, four, what's that? Uh, 45 bigs, 10, 11 bigs, and 50 bigs. Um, so, you know, the, this is why uh, I feel that tournaments are, uh, are so great because of the, the different stack sizes, the different uh, dynamics that you'll have with each player. Uh, that you can create, and they're just also forced by their by their stack size. Um, so it's going to make for some interesting uh, spots as we move forward. So, so we'll just go through to the one next hand, and then we'll end the video. Well, hang on. Let's go back a hand. It looks like I won that hand with nine two suited. Um, I don't like this raise at all. I mean, look at the stacks behind us. Uh, you've got one, two, three, four stacks who could easily go in, and this guy as well. So five stack, all five stacks. Um, chances are these guys are going to um, go. The only reason that I can think I possibly raise at this point is if this was the the bubble, and these guys are playing really, really tight, just looking to to cash. Um, you know, substantial min cash. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It seems a bit weak to me. I mean, we're only picking up a tiny amount, and the chances that someone just goes, "Oh well, hell, hell to it. Let's just go with uh, Jack three off suit." You know, we're still behind. <laughs> um, we did pick it up, but um, mm, I mean, it can't be be too bad um, if it is the bubble. Uh, that can't be the only th reason I can think of why I chose to play play that hand in that spot. Um, let's go to one more interesting hand, and then we said we'd we'd end it on the 
last time we next time we played but it was uh, not that interesting so we got a lot of shoves now which makes me think that this perhaps is the uh, we, the bubble has burst uh, so Tenjakov suit here again four stacks behind it going to be shoving um, I don't think we can call anyone if they decide to shove against us um, which would make me want to not open hand like jack 10 off suit here um but i think now that if the if the bubble has burst we can expect players to be opening um their ranges for getting it in uh which means that we can actually tighten up and play our strong hands and, and actually get paid on our strong hands um of course it's good to open hands that we're not going to get in now and again um so we don't just play really tight and it's too obvious to other players that we've got a strong hand when we do open um, so in that sense it's a you know it's a, it's a fine raise um, but given that there that, excuse me there are four um, stacks behind they could easily get it in and we I don't think we can call any of them even this guy um, maybe just get the right odds against this guy um, but I think it's probably just good to, to fold um, fold pre Okay, um, so that's been uh, that's been the second part of this uh, five dollar two rebuy one add on. Um, some of the plays I was happy with. Um, we talked about trying to get value when we have a strong hand. Looking at the range of hands our opponent has, uh, we made some disciplined folds um, against passive players that choose to check raise us on the turn. Um, one pair is is really really good. Um, of course, there are situations when it is good, um, but if we're looking to preserve our stack, so a passive player check raises on the turn. I think you can expect a bet on the river, um, and you, you know, you have to make a decision on the turn. If you're going to call the turn, you're going to be calling the river. If you're not going to be calling the river, um, then I think you can you can just fold the turn. Um, if you think this player is capable of check raising a bluff field and he's going to check raise the turn and then check check the river, um, then it's worth calling. Um, but if that's not the case, then I think you can let um, one pair of hands go when you're looking to preserve your stack. Obviously, if the stacks are shorter, then we just need to um, get it in. Uh, but when stacks are still deep, uh, we're looking to uh, you know to value about our strong hands um, and get away from our sort of st strong hands. But when a passive player shows strength, um, we can you know as I keep saying we can fold just uh, a one pair hand. Um, we've also seen some. Um, some all in uh, confrontations, one where you got it in really good with ace king against ace eight suited. You got ace king in against eight. I think they were both fine. Um, not too sure about the ace jack suited in against queens. We raised from early position. Um, he chose to get 13, 14 bigs in. The reason we chose to get it in, we've seen him do some funky things already, um, like raise off a 13 big blind stack, call a three bet, and then fold on the flop. Um, but if that player is weak, um, he's seeing you raise from early position. Uh, I would imagine that his three bet range there is going to be really, really strong and completely crushing ace jack suited. So um, I think I should have just folded them. Um, but yeah, so this has been Gazellig for grinderscore.com. As always, um, leave some comments and questions. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if there are any points that you didn't understand, um, then uh, yeah, let me know and I'll uh, I'll explain them in the thread. All right. Um, so anyway, yeah, till next time. Um, have fun at the tables. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later. Bye.